Welcome back to our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia. My name's Larry. Thanks for joining us. Today's project is this little, uh, I guess it's an antique. It's probably from the 20s or maybe a little bit earlier. Little oak secretary desk. Uh, it has a nice little flip down lid and a little pigeonhole here. And a, a drawer that was broken. I already fixed it. Uh, it was in uh, a gentleman's apartment and the neighbors upstairs had a water leak and water poured down on it and there's really not a whole lot of uh, really not a whole lot of money to do this project uh, for various reasons it's not important so he's asked me to refinish the front of the desk where and I'll show you the water has lifted the finish and the top which the water basically destroyed the finish this trim piece here, uh, that's what the commission is for. Uh, because of who we are and what we do, we, we very well may do more work on this, uh, just as a favor for the gentleman, because we don't like things to leave here looking, looking unfortunate. So give me a second, I'll take this down off the table, I'll bring you in and show you what we're dealing with. And you're looking down on top of the, uh, the secretary, and you can see this finish is just completely lifted off right here. Uh, he tells me his mother refinished this about 20 years ago. He thought she'd use shellac. I tested it with alcohol. It didn't dissolve. I tested it with lacquer thinner. It didn't dissolve. So it's polyurethane. Uh, so this top has to be uh, completely refinished. Let's look at, at the front of the drum, drop, drop down lid. And here's the front of the lid, and I think you can see where the water dripped down on the piece and got in behind the finish and, uh, and bubbled it up. You know, the finish was probably starting to fail, and then when the, the water, it got wet, the water just got under it and lifted it right off and started to move the wood. Uh, the, the finish feels brittle to me, so it's consistent with a 20-year-old uh, polyurethane refinish job. Now this is all I've been commissioned to do, the, the, the top and the top, this, and this. Let's take you around to what would be the left side of the cabinet, our right side. You can see we've got more issues here where the finish has been, uh, been destroyed. The other side is intact. I'm getting ready to take the lid off and you can see the slot head screws are pretty well closed up with gunk. I imagine that's probably polyurethane from the last refinish. So before we even attempt to put a screwdriver blade in there, we need to clean these out so we don't strip the heads of the screws off and make this thing look terrible. And you can see, basically this is just a dull knife I keep in the shop. But by carefully pushing this through, you can see the amount of stuff that's coming out of the head of this screw. Because we want to get a good purchase on this screw so we don't mar it. So let me get these screws cleaned out and I'll bring you back. And I hope you can see that we've got these screw heads cleaned out. This is the stuff that was in there. And uh, I'm able to get a screwdriver in there and I should get a pretty decent purchase on this. I'm going to need both hands to get this uh, unscrewed so let me put you down. You can see how this was uh, polyurethane right over. We'll leave it in there just a little bit. And remember, you've only got one shot to get these things out without damaging them, so be careful. I'm pushing straight down on the screw, going nice and slow doing our absolute level best to keep from damaging these old slot head screws. And we're not helped very much by the fact that they're polyurethane in. Okay, I'm going to leave that just like that, give us some support, and I'll get started on these uh, screws for the hinges. You can see the screws for the hinges do not sit evenly in the pockets of the, of the hinge. But we'll deal with that. All right, we're going to get these out, and I'll bring you back. 
I've got these screws cleaned out the best I can get them and they're being pretty stubborn. They're brass, they're soft, and I don't want to strip them. I had two viewers comment on a solution that they've had success with when screws are stuck in wood is to take a soldering iron and let it get hot and then put the iron right on the head of the screw and let the screw heat up and as it cools off it'll break the bond with the wood and it should also help break the bond with the polyurethane. So I've got this uh, this on right now and let's see how it goes. Once again the collective knowledge of the community has come uh, come to work because that trick loosened this screw right up. And I'm sorry I don't remember the names of the uh, viewers that suggested this. Uh, I've got to get I've got to get better with that. I've got to start writing this stuff down. But that was that was huge. So that's a great tip for you all. Uh, I can't take credit for it. I learned it from someone else. But uh, sharing knowledge is a big part of what the channel is about. All right, let me get the rest of these screws out, and we'll move forward. And that heating up worked great. I held the iron on the screws for about one minute on each side. And then the other thing I like to do before I pull something like this off is just take a razor blade and break the bond between the hinge and the finish. Normally, when you refinish something, you take the hinge off, but it was the finish went on over top of the hinge, and I don't want to take this top off and have the finish stay on here and run the risk of tearing the finish or tearing the wood. So I'm going to uh, run the razor around both hinges like this, then I'll pull the screws out the rest of the way and we'll take off this drop leaf. Notice I'm supporting the, uh, the drop down with my hand so we're not putting any undue stress on the screws that are still in there otherwise they'll pull out. Off, no damage. Shred score. Okay, we're now behind the piece, and you can see that this top trim piece is held on with two screws, one there and one there. And we'll do the exact same thing: dig out the grooves. If we have to, we'll heat them up, and we'll pop this right off. Both screws came out the same way. Dug them out, you know, dug out the grooves, heated them up, backed them out with a screwdriver carefully. I've attached them to the back of the piece. We don't mislay them. And here's the upper trim piece. And look at the goo on the underside of that. Looks like this was an originally a shellac finish, which would be consistent with the date of the piece. And then it's been refinished with uh, polyurethane. And it appears that they did not take this piece off when they refinished it. So whatever stripper or whatever got under here is what you see gummed up at the seam. All right, let's move forward. I scraped off what I could. Uh, there's residual polyurethane on it. I need to get it off. Uh, I'm going to have to use some commercial stripper to do it. I have the entire piece wrapped up in plastic to keep the stripper where it belongs. We'll, we'll start just with the top and see how we do. I'm just using... Uh, commercial paste stripper so I don't have to worry about it running as I would if I used my liquid stuff. And standard safety guidelines or warnings to you, well ventilated area, gloves, eye protection, all that stuff. Just follow the instructions on the can to keep yourself safe. It's always challenging when you're refinishing parts of a piece of furniture. It's you know, in addition to the color matching issues, it's where do you start, where do you stop, and inevitably you drip something on something that was supposed to be the way it was. And sometimes it, it can be more time consuming to do this than just to strip the whole piece and, and refinish it, but we'll see what we can do to accommodate this gentleman. Okay. We'll let it set. We've been about 10 minutes or so 
let's see how we did with the stripper. It looks like we've got most of the top coat off with the first application and we've left the color behind, which is exactly what we wanted to do. So I'm going to take that as a win. That's a good thing. Over here we're preparing to strip the front of this piece and we're getting it taped up so we don't have any stripper dripping anywhere it's not supposed to. This edge here is going to get refinished so what I'll do is I'll take the razor blade and trim everything back and get ready to strip this. We do have an escutcheon on the front. We do have an escutcheon on the front of the uh, piece that's got to come off and I'll show you how we do that in just a second. But if you take a nice sharp razor blade, and I mean a brand new one, and just it's sticking to my gloves here. get your tape up in the air and then just run that razor blade right along the seam. She does exactly what she needs to do. Alright, let me finish taping this up and then we'll pull the escutcheon. Okay, this escutcheon, like most others that I've seen, is just a thin piece of brass held on with a couple of little, uh, little tiny nails. I'm actually working with one hand and holding the camera with the other. And then what I do is just gently start to lift up on the escutcheon without bending it. And that raises up the brads. And here they come. Now you can always push the escutcheon back down and then grab the, ba the brads from up top. And let me do this on this one. Let me get a, a, a tool to grab that with. And there's the brad that we've raised up. We just grab it with a tool, pull straight up. There it is. And there's my finger for comparison. So we have two brass brads, brass escutcheon, and you can see this was not removed when this was refinished. And look at all the goo that's under there that we're going to have to get off. Okay, moving forward. And we need to get the underside of the top done, and of course we don't want the stripper running down into the interior. So we're going to use gravity as our friend. I've got the piece turned upside down. And now using the brush, I can very carefully apply it right up to the tape line. And we'll have a nice clean break in the finish. And as it comes time to pull this stripper off, I'm just going to use this brass brush, which is a, brass is soft and shouldn't scratch, and just lightly brush off the stripper and then follow it up with a rag. And off it comes. This finish is coming off really, really easy, which is fortunate. All the stripping is done. I've just got to uh, lacquer uh, rinse this. It's been uh, neutralized with water and all the finishes off the pieces that we were commissioned to refinish. So we've got all the old finish off. Majority of the color, if not all of the color, is still on. So these have been wiped off with uh, water. As soon as they dry we're going to get some lacquer thinner and uh, wipe them down with some lacquer thinner and then we will be ready to start uh, figuring out how we're going to top coat this stuff. So I'll bring you back. Alright, looking at some color issues. That's the existing cabinet. That's the underside of the top. It's a little bit lighter. And then there's the front of the drop down door, which is a whole lot lighter. So we're going to have to uh, 
color this. It's a walnut color. I definitely don't want to put a white bean stain on it because if I go too dark, I'm absolutely screwed. So I think what we're going to do is let this all dry for a while, and I'll come in here and shoot a seal coat of uh, a lacquer seal coat on it. We'll sand that down, and then I think we'll start to tone this up so that everything matches. Stripped, sanded, we're ready to seal it. Put my mask on. Got some 4 hot steel wool. Rub down the first coat of sealer. And the weather is such that we can bring the spray operation outside now. Let's go. Second seal coat. With the second seal coat on, it's time to start thinking about color. And this is very, very difficult, I know, for you because, first of all, it's extremely bright out here. But uh, this is the cabinet color, and that's the color of the top. And I don't think we're very far off. This needs a little bit more uh, brown, a little bit more red. Uh, a medium brown walnut toner, I believe, will get us there. And here's the drop lid next to it. And again, it's not far off. It just needs to be a, a shade darker and a little less of the yellow and a little bit more of the red. So I think a medium brown walnut toner is going to get us where we need to go. We don't need to go very far, so we've got to be very judicious with its application. So as soon as the seal coat gets good and hard, we'll buff it off with 4 out steel wool. I'll mix up some toner, which is basically lacquer thinner, some uh, medium brown walnut dye stain, and a little bit of lacquer, and uh, we'll start to pull these colors together. I think what I'll do is work on getting this top the same color as the case, and then I can use the top as a guide for the uh, for the rest of the pieces instead of having to bring it over here and try to try to gauge it off the side of the of the and here's the color I mixed up it's a medium brown walnut it's uh, pretty light we're gonna see if we can sneak up on this color so here we go And we're back inside. It's just too hot to spray lacquer. I was starting to get bubbles. Uh, but you can see the color match here is, is really good. Very, very happy with the color match. It looks great. The top or the drop down lid looks great. And the back looks great. So I'm going to continue to uh, shoot a couple more coats of lacquer on everything. And then the next step, I'm not going to show you the lacquer that I'm going to do. It's the same as it's always been. But the next step is for us to figure out how we can touch this up for the gentleman. And we'll get on that next. And here's what I'm dealing with. It's this loss of color right through here. Now what I've done is I've taken some 400 grit sandpaper and smoothed this out. Uh, there's obviously a seam here in the furniture that's nothing I'm going to take care of. But what I'm going to do is I'm using some pigmented colors, perfect brown, raw umber, and dark Van Dyke brown, or Van Dyke brown, and then I'm using some, uh, just a, sh uh, basically it's just a shellac, it's a padding liquid, and mixing up colors as I see appropriate. I'm going to hold you and try to do this. And I'm just laying color in here on top of this light wood. And then using my finger. Wiping it off until it's where I want it to be.
and you don't want to just paint in solid lines. That doesn't look that doesn't look natural. So put it in darker in spots, lighter in other spots. Feather it out with your finger. Change up colors. Dab it in. Make it random. But let's color out. this damage. And you can see already I hope that it's looking much better. Okay I think we've got this color issue pretty well resolved. Uh, there's a, there are a number of runs in the old finish from the original refinishing job and now I've got to top coat this. This is polyurethane. Remember lacquer and polyurethane don't always play well together. I think what I'm going to do is, uh, is go with a uh, maybe a spray polyurethane so I don't disturb the color I just lay down and uh, perhaps a wipe on if I have to but and I'm just taking this razor blade and gently flattening out some of these drips so they're not quite so pronounced Okay, let me get this ready to, uh, to spray. And I just have a can of uh, spray polyurethane here. We've sanded this lightly. As you know, polyurethane needs a mechanical bond. So we've sanded it lightly. We've colored it. Knocked down some of the, the runs that were on there from the prior refinishing. And we're just going to put a light coat of polyurethane on. And that takes care of the uh, finished flaws we had on that side. So that was great. There's our top. There's our other pieces. This has come out very well. I'm very happy with it so far. Alright, I will bring you back when I put it all back together. We're almost done. Good morning, let's put this back together. Okay, let's put this escutcheon back in. If you remember, it was all covered with refinishing goo. I just took some uh, lacquer thinner and a piece of 4 out steel wool and knocked that off of there. And depending on your dexterity, you can hold this with a pair of pliers or whatever works for you. Lining it up with the original holes. And then... Tack it right back in, just like that. There we go, ready to go on. Okay, we're ready to put the, uh, the lid back on. Because we were careful with marking our screws, we're all set. As you can see, I'm just going to put some candle wax on them to help them go back in. And I've kept these screws marked so I know that's the left side hinge. The center pile of screws is for the, the, uh, the long hinge. And then this here is for the, the hinge on the right. pretty much just balancing this lid on my legs.
here you can see what we've done. And I am just tickled pink the way that came out. I think that looks beautiful. And I think it was just what the owner wanted. The color match is flawless. It's really, really nice. Got only one other thing to do, and that's I want to do a little bit of uh, rub out the finish just a little bit. Normally when I rub out a finish, I like it to wait about a week. But in this case, I want to get this back to this gentleman as quickly as I can. So we're going to do it... Uh, I'm going to do it now and I'll show you how I do it. Okay, I've got a nice brand new clean piece of 4-ox steel wool. And then we need a lubricant. And today I'm going to be using Howard's Feed and Wax. You can also use a wool lube, which is a commercially available uh, product for rubbing out finishes. It's basically just a kind of a high-grade soap. And I put a little bit on it, remembering that the, the grain of the steel wool runs this way. And I'm not grinding down on this at all. I'm going nice and lightly. And what we're doing is we're shearing off any little dust nibs or, or flaws in the, in the finish that keeps it from feeling glass smooth. And you'll feel these little, little catches as you go along here where you find a piece that maybe has a little, a little dot, dent, a dot on it or something. And then when you're done... When you rub your hands across here, it should be silky smooth, which this is. When I'm using this on a relatively new surface, like this one is, I don't put a lot of pressure on it. I just let the steel wool cut what it cuts, and it works out, it works out very well. And we'll polish up this inside here. And if you remember, we didn't do any work on the inside of this lid or the inside of this piece at all and what I'm doing now this is this is not I'm not rubbing this finish out because it's an existing finish I'm just I'm just giving it a little polish so it looks nice take a clean microfiber and lightly wipe off the wax leaves a very thin coat behind got some wear spots here looks like from where someone rested their wrist right there that just the way it is. And she is all done and she looks wonderful. It's a little oak secretary. Well, if I had to guess, I'd say circa 1920, 1910 maybe. She came in here water damaged, we refinished the lid, the top, this top trim piece. We fixed a double water run down the side of this that had lifted the finish off and it came out great. So listen, from our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia, best regards, thanks for watching, take good care. We'll see you next video, and remember, it's just wood, color, and some shiny stuff. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out in the shop with me. See you next time. Bye.